We got the skillet getting warm. We got the potatoes peeled. And we got the best pork in the state of Illinois from Hy-Vee getting ready to be cooked. So Binks is inviting other cats up here. Kind of. As the skillet gets closer, so does the kitty kitty. That's the neighbor's cat. And Binks is like, well, Dad, I just want her to come up and eat. So now we're going to put the meat right on the heat. A little bit of a sizzle. I was expecting a little bit more than that. There we go. And because we got four big chunks of meat, I'm using the bigger, the bigger skillet. Now I'll get ready to spice all that on top. And I do believe the cat has come up to eat. There she is. Yep. There she is. Now it looks like now I gotta. Where's Binks? Oh, there's Binks. Hiding there. No, Binks, do you want that cat there or no? If you don't, I'll chase her out. Well, we're gonna. You gotta go. Come on. You gotta go. Yep. I mean, you're not. You're not catching mice. You're not paying rent. All right. Yep, even the stamps. Don't do anything. You gotta protect your food, kitty. And now we got it nice and seasoned up there. We got the potatoes getting ready to boil. And what I'll do is just kind of add a little bit more butter for flavor once I flip them over. So we're gonna add some corn. So I'm looking at the nutrition of corn. So I got about three and a half servings per container. Mm. Got some dietary fiber. Got some carbs. Got some sugars, of course. Calcium, about 2%. 2% iron, 4% potassium. That's actually pretty good. That's about all that's contributing, and some flavor. And then, got them cooking, we got these boiling. Alright, so, we got the heat going on one side, so we're going to flip them over. Maybe. That's why I got the bigger skillet. Butter. Now it's actually came a little of the potatoes to the what's considered, considered a simmer burner, and it's keeping it at a boil. And then the corn, well, I'll just I'll just nuke it. All right, so we got the pork chops going. Got the corn ready. Got the potatoes going. Now we're going to do mashed potatoes. We're going to use regular salt and gold butter and that's gonna be dinner I'll show a photo of it here later so we got everything cooking really well this is why you keep in quantity butter and olive oil and of course even baking grease so it gives me an idea I'm gonna add some baking grease to this and that's gonna put some extra flavor in there got the potatoes still boiling Got the corn in the microwave. It's just canned corn. But uh, pretty soon we'll be able to buy uh, fresh corn on the cob. And that's what we'll be eating for a while. Kind of a weird thing to know. If you eat a lot of corn, you need to take extra vitamin K. This is something we did not know. So we're cooking pork. To add some good flavor into it. 
I'm going to use a big scoop of baking grease. This is why I save it. And this will definitely add flavor, which we want. into the mix. So butter, olive oil, baking grease. And this is why we save it. This is eating good in the neighborhood. So, oh my God, you got baking grease in there. It's full of fats and stuff like that. Yeah, it is, but it's better than seed oils, which most of you are cooking in anyway. So now that I got baking grease in there, so Time to give it a flip. Oh yeah. And get the other side flavored. So we are talking some good cooking. Still got the potatoes going. And the simmer burner. That's how strong it is. And uh, canned corn just kind of add to the mix. Mm, this is going to be good. So I got, got a 30 second nuke to get the butter melted. Got them flipping, cooking really well in Himalayan salt, fresh ground pepper, olive oil, curious butter, and baking grease. I mean, that's some good flavors. And the potatoes will sit there and they'll get Irish butter, they'll get milk, which will be fairly milk, and they will get salt. So, the secret to know if they're done is you gotta look at the surface. So you see, we still got some blood coming through on that one. Well, it's not done yet. And see how it's one of the skinnier ones. We can kind of make the same assumption with the other three, even though it might be brown better. Especially when you have a bone in the meat. It takes a little bit longer. The are still going. And what I'll do is I'll wait until the meat's done, and then I'll work on that. All right, so we're like one more flip, and we will be ready. You get the potatoes going. Oh yeah. And you get the corn finished up. So I'm telling you, Ty B has got the best pork chop. These Iowa chops are just so full of meat and flavor. I just can't wait to have them. And like I said, in about five minutes we'll be ready to start making those. All right, so we got that cooking well. Got this boiling well. We're going to take it off the heat. And we're going to drain it. And what's nice is we have a lid that allows us to drain. We got it drained. Now we're going to put a big chunk of butter in there and allow it to melt. And once it melts, we will add milk and we will add salt. And then we'll mix it up. So I leave it there and let the butter get nice and soft. Why we're still finishing this, I kicked it down to low. But I really think we're pretty good. I got two. I think I'm still going to flip over just because I kind of see some uh, blood still rising to the top. So, flipping it over helps with the taste and the seasoning. The corn, all set. I can just nuke it really quick to get it warm. 
and we will be ready to make that. You can kind of see it's already melting. So we're just a few minutes away from adding some salt and some milk and make those mashed potatoes. Okay, so the butter is all melted and we're going to add a bunch of salt. And then we can always add it later. We're going to throw some milk in there. And then we're going to mix it up. There we go. What we're doing is we're trying to make it mashed. So it's still kind of thick. So what we're going to do, oh, we're going to add some more, more milk into it. And you want to do it a little bit at a time. Because once you overdo it, well then, it's over. <laughs> always want to have it just a little bit under you can always kind of add a little bit more if you have to so you got butter you got milk you got salt you got potatoes this is how you make mashed potatoes and i think i got just the right consistency close enough And it's going to be really good with the pork chops and the corn. Oh, yeah. And even though you know, we're only looking at about maybe 12, 13 minutes of video here, you know, we're talking about 45 minutes for this meal to get prepared. Steaks going, or the pork chops. We'll uh, warm up the corn, and we're gonna be ready to eat good in the neighborhood. And this is eating good in the neighborhood. So I hope everybody enjoys this. I'll be putting this up as a premiere, so we can have a little bit of live chat while we're doing this. Probably going to do it on a few of my channels just to have a little more fun with it. Everybody, have a wonderful weekend.